along with your hands.
Jesus, we shout your name. Jesus, we make your praise glory.
Holy Spirit, move in this place. Let the Holy Spirit move in this place. The Lord of all lords, King of all kings, move in this place. Move in this place, God. We just came for you to move. We just came for you to do what you want to do. Let your will be done, God.
chased down my heart through all of my failure and pride. On a hill you created, light of the world, abandoned in darkness to die. And as you speak, Billion failures disappear. Well, you lost your life so I could find it here. If you left the grave behind you, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you've done. Every part. like a lost sheep but you didn't forget about us you didn't forget you never ever forget and you never leave a lost sheep and thank you father because you have never abandoned us and we just want to say thank you Worship is as easy as saying thank you, thank you, thank you. We tell our soul to cry out to you. We tell our soul to be grateful. We tell our soul that this is the moment to sing, to praise, for you to move. sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where we hear praises, he hears faith. It's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where we hear worship.
Sing His praise aloud. 
mistake The bowels of hell begin to shake Oh hail the Lord, oh hail the King Sing awake my soul Awake my soul and sing Sing His praise aloud Sing His praise aloud Come on, soul, wake up Awake my soul and sing Sing His praise aloud Sing out loud Sing His praise aloud Oh, sometimes you gotta tell your soul to sing out your praise, sing out your praise, sing his praise aloud, mm -hmm. wake my soul and sing, sing his praise aloud, sing his praise aloud, oh I know, I know, I know that you're here, that you're here Jesus. Continue to sing out to him. Continue to tell your soul that it's time to rise up and proclaim to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords, the one who gave his only son. He did everything. He did everything on that cross.
Sing His praise aloud. Sing His praise away. Why don't you guys give it up louder to the Lord? Give it up louder because He's right here in His place. Amen. Why don't you guys turn on the lights? Uh, man, I want to invite everyone. Does anybody here? Does anybody here need interpretation here? Alguien ocupa un intérprete? Raise your hand. We're all good. We can all speak English here. Perfect. Why don't you get up and just go say hi to the person next to you. Tell the person, man, happy to see you. If you got to get up and go say hi to the person on the other side, do so. If you're in the back, I invite you to come to the front. Amen. Praise Jesus. It is an honor for me to be able to share the word today. Amen. I thank God for this opportunity. Amen. Because God is good. Um, my name is Oscar. For the ones who don't know me, I am 29 years old. And I'm, I have, I've been saved for about almost four years now. And I tell you that that was the best decision I ever made in my life when I gave my life back to Christ. Amen. Today's, uh, today's uh, title of this message is, Don't Dishonor Your God. Tell the person next to you, don't dishonor your God. And with that being said, why don't you guys stand up with me so we can pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you because you're here, God. I pray, Lord, that, that you, Father God, just move me inside and let it be you speaking, God. Touch every heart here, Father God, every mind, Father God, that, Father God, whoever is feeling weak, Father God, that you give them the strength, Father God, that your Holy Spirit just overwhelm this place here, Father God. We love you and we thank you. And we all say amen. Amen. This week, my heart was uh, hurting all week. And... It was hurting because I began to see everything that was going on in the world. I began to meditate on what the things of this world has been, what has been going on, the wars. And, and it really caught my attention. We see that in this world, it has completely changed. We see now that what is called bad is good. And what is good is bad. Who here agrees with me? And how so? Anywhere you go now, it is demanded homosexuality. To accept homosexuality. You got to accept it now. Perversion. How sex before marriage has became the normal thing. What about when they legalize marijuana? It has become a normal thing in the world. Do we all agree? How coal has become a normal thing to see on TV. On social media. Instagram, TikTok. I don't know, Snapchat. If anybody still uses Snapchat. How they, had, how they had tried to force on kids uh, that the same gender is okay. It has been so, it has been so, so, so like, it has been okay with it. 
in my work, I, I, go to, I go to work in a lot of schools. And I've been seeing how they have combined the, the, the restrooms into an all gender thing. It has become normal. And I see all these things and it's heartbreaking. Now I imagine how the Lord feels about this. Amen. Why don't you guys come with me to Daniel chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. And give me a huge amen when you get there. Maybe you're on your gadget. Maybe you have your gadget there. Daniel chapter 1, verse 8 through 9. And it says this, but Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. And he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Now God had caused the official to show favor and compassion to Daniel. Now Daniel was a man that brought honor to God. In everything he did, he brought honor to God. He brought so much honor to God that it was the food, even the food that he ate, he was like, no, I'm not going to eat this certain food. Now, what does the food have to do with anything? Well, the food, the food that they were eating in the royal palace with the king, that food was sacrificed to their God, to the king's God. He didn't worship the one, in living, the one and only true living God, Jesus Christ. No, he didn't. This man respected himself, respected himself so much that he tried to bring honor to God with eating with what he ate. Imagine sitting in the king's palace and this man was like, no, I am not going to defile God myself first, and I'm not going to dishonor God with the things that I eat. And it's not about, the message today is not about eating, okay? What a man of God. Tell the person next to you, don't dishonor your God. And because the Lord... Because he honored the Lord, the Lord showed favor upon him. Amen? And you might say, Oscar, have you always honored God? How does this, how does this message reflect on us? Because a lot of the times in my life, I have dishonored God in many ways. Daniel was a man who I look up to in the Bible. There are many uh, 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 characters in the Bible who I looked up to, who I look up to. And I had, I myself had made wrong choices, even in my Christian walk. I dishonored God with not reading my word, forgetting to pray. I have dishonored God in that way. And when I think about Daniel and how he honored God, it would smack me right in the face. Because Daniel would wake up every single day and he would pray to the Lord. This man would pray three times a day. I had learned, every time I dishonored God, I learned to honor God in even a better way. Every time I brought, God would bring guilt to me, God would show me. To honor him even in a better way. And all the mistakes I have done in my Christian walk, God has shown me, hey, bro, get it together. Do this. You're doing this wrong. God, every time I would try to go to the left, God would bring me right back on track with him. And every time I made a mistake, God corrected me over and over again. Because that's how good God is. Amen? Amen? And there were many people in the Bible 
who live their life dishonoring the Lord. What about Judas? One of the disciples, one of the disciples who walk with God, who's seen the miracles, sold out God for gold. Seeing all these things, feeding the 3,000, 3, healing all kinds of people. He dishonored God by selling God out for gold. Peter denying Jesus three times. My favorite one was about a woman who lived in Samaria. This woman lived her life dishonoring God. And this woman, the Bible says that she had, she had like over five husbands. And God comes and tells her, give me something to drink. She said, who are you? To make the story, long, long story short, he began to tell her about her life. She begins to believe in God. At that moment, that woman repented. A woman that lived in dishonor, having man after man, in her life. But you see, God, even in, this, in our dishonor, he doesn't see that. Because that's just how good God is. That even when we live in our dishonor, our moments of dishonor, God is not looking at your, how you dishonor him. God is not seeing, oh, look, look, angel dishonored me today. Oscar dishonored me today. He, he doesn't see it that way. But yet he comes and he tries to sit with us to offer us eternal life. Can I get an amen? Is the Christian walk hard? Yes, it is. It's for the brave though. It is for the brave. And I believe that a lot of you here are brave young men and women. Can I get an amen? And let me tell you that your walk is not always going to be perfect. That through your trials, every time you, 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 you fall, you're going to learn from that. But only the coward stays down. And I'm speaking about myself. Because I walked away from the Lord. When I walked away from the Lord, I thought that was the best decision in my life. Walking away from the Lord. And that was the dumbest thing I have ever done in my life. When I came back to the Lord, I asked God for forgiveness. I was like, God, forgive me for walking away from you for seven years. In those seven years, I lived my life dishonoring the Lord. When I came back to the Lord, man, I tell you that there is nothing better than to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 9, 23 and 24, and it says this. Then he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up the cross daily and follow me. Forever, forever, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will save it. See, the moment the Lord touched that Samaritan woman, God showed compassion over her. But you know what happened when God spoke to this woman? A lady that had all kinds of husbands. She went and proclaimed the name of the Lord all over her village, began this biggest revival, testifying about her testimony, what the Lord had did for her. And that caused a great revival in her village. It made everybody go, call Jesus. Jesus was passing by in a donkey. Passing by in a donkey was everybody was calling, saying, Hosanna to the highest. Hosanna to the highest. And that brought so much joy when I was reading this story and every time I read it over and over again it brings a joy into my life because it was a woman who maybe seen herself less because she had all kinds of husbands she had a life of dishonor she, she probably dishonored God so many times 
And she thought, man, you know what? I'm never going to, I'm never, I'm always going to be this lady without a husband. I'm never probably going to have a husband. But God didn't see that. He didn't see that dishonoring her. He didn't see, oh, you know, you're dishonoring me. No. He went and sat with her and offered her living water of life, which is him. Can I get an amen? And I'm here to tell you, young people, that God is offering you eternal life. God is not seeing your disobedience, your dishonor. Of course God hates your sin. Of course God hates the sin. But he never hates the sinner. And with that being said, we should hate the sin. Can I get an amen? In my life, in my walk with the Lord, back again, I, I, I wanted to be this perfect Christian ever. But it's so hard, amen, to be this perfect Christian. And I tell you, brother and sister, that you will never be perfect. But if you live your life trying to honor God, trust me, brother. You get closer and closer to God each time. And each time that you see yourself dishonoring God, God's like, bro, he molds you into the way he wants you to be. Amen? And I tell you that he came to this woman to offer her eternal life. See, Jesus Christ, when he came to this world, he's seen a broken world. He gave his life, literally. God gave his life. Being holy gave his life for all of us here to restore a relationship between you and God. That's what the Lord came for. And I, I tell you, brother and sister, don't take this lightly. He came to forgive the world for that homosexual, for that rapist, for that pervert, for that Samaritan woman. He came for the world, for those people, for all the sinners. I want you to raise your hand if you here have never sinned. Raise your hand if you never sinned. All of us here have sinned, huh? God came for me and you. He came to restore that relationship with you and Him. And that's how good God is. That God is not looking at your disobedience. But God sees something great in you. My next question to you is... In the midst of all dishonor in the world, will you bring honor to God just like Daniel did? Or will you live your life and ignore the fact that the world needs God? Or will you be like the Samaritan woman who went to go preach and talk about what God did for her? Speaking of her testimony, it brought people to come see God. Because it was that living water that she tried that, was, that set her free. It brought that freedom in her. That nobody knew. Nobody knew what that lady was doing. But God did. Maybe you live your life right now honoring God. Dishonoring, dishonoring God. And I invite you to honor God. Daniel was a man. I love Daniel, man. This guy pumps me up every time I read the book about Daniel. Daniel was a man who lived in a, 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 a palace 
who they didn't serve the same God as him. This man, throughout the whole book of Daniel, this man honored God in every time, every time he went somewhere, every time he did something, he honored God. They would try to clothe him into being this prince, but he never, he never accepted anything of it because he knew who he was doing it for. He knew that he was honoring God. Now Daniel went through the worst thing ever. He was going through the worst. Even in the times of being close to death, this man brought honor to God. Literally. My question to you is, are you going to keep living this life of dishonor? Or are you going to be brave and take a stand against the devil and bring honor to God? Can I get an amen? You guys are too quiet today. What's going on? Young people, God is coming. And he's coming soon. And he is looking for a church that is clean. And let me tell you that if you're living your life in a dishonorable way, I tell you, brother, that you're not going to make it to heaven. And now I'm not condemning you. I promise you I'm not condemning you. I'm telling you, let's get back into honoring our Lord Jesus Christ. Many people in the Bible saw God. Daniel saw God. He expresses how God was. This beautiful God, powerful God. Brings me the chills just thinking about it. When I was 21 years old, I told God, God, I'm going to walk away from you. And when I, 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 I made that decision to walk away from the Lord, no, I was 20 years old, sorry. 19, I'm sorry, 19 years old. Somewhere around there. And I told God, I'm going to walk away from you. I don't want nothing to do with you anymore. The worst things happened to me when I walked away from the Lord. And I tell you, the worst things happened to me. And I thought that I was living my best life, dishonoring God. It wasn't until I came to the Lord, I began to see how much God loved me, even when I walked away from the Lord. Walking away from the Lord, I saw how, I saw how much God loved me. I saw much, how much he protected me. I saw how much he would take care of me in the midst of the club season, in the problem season. I saw how much God took care of me. Being into fights with people, God took care of me. He saved my life over and over and over again. I lived in dishonor. And you might say, brother, I live my, my life in a Christian way. I've never dishonored God. But you, not seeking God, not reading your word, not coming to church, skipping church, it's dishonoring God, brother. And I invite you to begin to honor God again. Amen? There was another man who I was like, man, what a... I took it as another dishonor was the disciple Timothy. Jesus had already rose up. He had already rose up and he was like, all right. He had holes in his hands. And people were telling him, everybody around him were telling him, hey, oh, Jesus is, Jesus is here. You know, we could see, his, 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 we could see his, the holes in his hands. He said, no, I got to see it to believe it. I was like, oh, bro. What a dishonor, bro. Like, you know, he didn't believe that God had risen up. And that really broke my heart reading this. But Jesus didn't see, oh, man, this guy's not believing. I'm not going to show up to this dude. No, I'm not going to show up to him. 
No, Jesus didn't see that, but yet he went and was like, look, check it out. This is me right here. He began to put his fingers inside like, oh, man. See, God doesn't care how much you've sinned. God doesn't care how much you're in disbelief is, how much you don't believe in him. How you doubt him. God doesn't, bro, I'll tell you that God will remind you that he is God every single day, how much he loves you every single day. He will remind you over and over again. Just like he's reminding us that he is coming back to get ready because their king of kings is coming back for his church. And he's telling you, son and daughter, get ready because I'm coming back. Stop living your life in a dishonorable way. Repent from your sins because the king is coming back. Because I'm coming back. And I tell you that when I, that I felt that, I began to cry because I was like, God, you really are coming back. Tell my people to start living in an honorable way. To sustain themselves from sex. To be strong and brave. To live a holy life. To come back to me. I see over and over that Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. This is the word that has been all over social media. All over the preacher's words. Jesus is coming back. And I tell you that Jesus is coming back for his church. Who believes that Jesus is coming back? Man, are you ready? Are you ready when God comes back for you? Will you meet God in the clouds? Are you ready? Are you guys ready? And if you're not ready, let me tell you, brother, tonight's the night. Tonight is the night to get your life back together. If you had stopped coming to church, begin to come back. If you have been living a double life, begin to walk straight with the Lord. If you have been doubting God, begin to trust in God. If you forgot to read the Word of God, if you got, forgot to pray, begin to do it. And I tell you, brother, that your ch life will change completely. Just like that woman, God came to offer us eternal life with him. Can I get an amen? God is so good that he loves you. He loves you so much. And I invite you, young people, to give your life back to God. God is not this, uh, what, what is, what is the, the, what is that? God is not this genie where you can just be like, ah, oh, God, give me this. Give me this. Give me that. God, I need a job. Give me this. God is not a genie. Don't use God for your benefit. Honor God. Honor God with, with your life. And I tell you that your whole life, your whole perspective will change. I promise you. If you don't know how to stop doing, uh, stop living your life in dishonor, begin to hang out with people. Begin to ask God to give you the strength to serve God. Amen? I was listening to uh, Pastor Tony when he was preaching on, on uh, Saturday. The word was that fami familiarity. People get familiar with the church. They get familiar to coming to church every Friday, every Sunday, every Wednesday. They get familiar. You know? And that really spoke to me. That really touched me. Because as a Christian, I got familiar with the church. I began just to come, just to come. But my heart was away from the Lord. Far away from the Lord. It was far away from the Lord. And that's how I walked away from the Lord the first time. And that's the only time I walked away from the Lord. Because I got familiar with the church. And I began to live. I began to see the church just like another day. Another thing. But when you come here, honor his presence. Honor God's presence. Dwell it into your life. It is the living water for you and I. Can I get an amen? Now is the time 
We're going to get in a time of worship right now. And I invite you today to give your life to Christ. Maybe you feel confused of what to do with your life, how to give your life back to Christ. I invite you, give your life back to God. Come. There's a church that loves you, wants to pray for you. Why don't you guys stand up with me? Maybe you've been maybe you've been stuck with pornography. Maybe you've been dishonoring God in that way. Maybe you've been in gossips. Maybe you forgot your calling. And you began to dishonor God. Maybe you put your work before God. Maybe you don't want nothing to do with God anymore. Maybe you prioritized your hobbies and your career before God. I tell you, begin to live and honor God with your whole heart. Maybe you've been church hurt before and you don't want nothing to do with the Lord. I invite you to open up your heart to God. There was this man who I was speaking to this week. This man opened up to me and told me, you know what, Oscar? I, I don't want to go back to church ever. And I asked him why. He said, because the church scanned me. And I'm like, how so? And he began to tell me how he worked for them and he never got paid. And that hurt me very much because as a follower of Christ, the person who calls himself a child of God does not act that way. Can I get an amen? And the enemy has used a lot of things to hurt that man. And I told him, before anything, bro, I want to say sorry that that happened to you. And I began to tell him how much God loves him. I began to speak to him. I was like, bro, regardless of what happened to you, just know that God loves you. And he told me, are you interested in my money? And I was like, no, I'm just talking to you about the Lord Jesus Christ. And I told him, bro, I'm not trying to debate with you. And he goes, I see your heart. I feel your heart. I know you don't want nothing with me. I, f I can feel that. And I said, no, that's the Holy Spirit who's allowing you to see that. I don't want nothing to do with your money, man. I just want you to know who God is. This man began to share with me that he was going to church faithfully. He was like, I began to, I got out of prison. I began to serve church. I began to serve in the church. And, and I was so hurt when this happened to me that I walked away. I began to dishonor God. And I was like, man, that hurt me. And I prayed for him. And this man, thank God. He asked for the, he, he began to ask for the, uh, the church address. And I gave it to him. What time does church start? But that's, what, that's how good God is. That he doesn't see their dis, people's disobedience. He loves you so much that he's not seeing all that. He doesn't see what you've done yesterday, what you did 20 minutes ago before coming to church. He doesn't see that. You know what God sees? He sees a child that he created for his own good. That's what God sees. He sees a lot of potential in you. And I tell you, young person, there's nothing better than to serve God. There's nothing better than to serve God. And I invite you to serve God.
Can I get an amen? Why don't you close your eyes right there? Maybe you've been living your life in a dishonorable way. Maybe you walked away from the Lord. Maybe you've been living in a life of disobedience. But I invite you to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if that's you tonight, raise your hand. Raise your hand if you want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I tell you that your life will never be the same. It will never be the same. Just like that Samaritan woman who had those five husbands, her life changed completely. It changed completely when she gave her life to Christ. If you want to come forward, I invite you to come forward. Maybe you need prayer. Maybe you're saying, Oscar, I don't want to be this way, but I don't know how to, how to change, how to, how to, I feel like I want to be set free. I invite you to come forward. Don't be scared. Nobody's going to see you. Don't worry about that. Maybe you're tired of living your life dishonoring Christ, dishonoring God, dishonoring your family. Maybe you're tired of hearing you're nobody. You're a nobody. I tell you because I heard it so many times. How they would say I was a nobody. That I was never going to get into life. I was never going to get nowhere into life. I invite you to come forward. The Holy Spirit is right here. With all eyes closed. Don't look. Who's, don't look. Don't look who's coming up forward. I invite you to come forward yourself. Don't get comfortable with how the world is. Let it urge you to speak about Jesus. Let it urge you to save those lives for Christ. Let it urge you like a burning fire to tell them that there's a Messiah, there's a Christ that loves them. Let it urge you to tell the world, yo, God loves you. God has a plan for you. God can heal you. Let it urge you to go to the world, to preach to the world, to preach to the nations. Let it urge you that the way you're living should be a life of honor of God, to honor God. Let it urge you that sexual morality Sex before marriage is not the right thing. Let it urge you. This is not the right thing. I invite you to come forward. As we go into this season of worship. And if you need prayer, come. Come.
life Cause I love, I love you I want to walk the righteous path I love, I love you I surrender all to you Cause I love, I love you Oh, I'm not looking back I'm not looking back Cause I love, Why don't you guys join me in the time of worship? Why don't you guys come forward and we're going to worship together Come forward, bring your friend. We're going to worship God. We're going to worship together. Come on. Grab somebody right there where you're at. Grab somebody and begin to pray for somebody. Begin to declare victory over somebody. You begin to declare. <clears throat> the best of your blessings over somebody. Don't hold back. <clears throat> Come. It's not a time to see. The Holy Spirit is here. The Holy Spirit is here. People are being set free right now from depression. People are giving their life back to God. People are being set free from anxiety. People are being coming back to the Lord. People are repenting. There's a repentance right now. Begin to declare your best blessings to your family, your brothers here in Christ.
him delayed in sin to rise. Come on, say it again. Who oh, day and night, night and day, laid in sin to rise. Incense is your worship. Who oh, night and day, laid in sin to rise. Who oh, day and night, night and day, laid in sin to rise. Day Surrender your heart 
and say, I exalt thee, O Lord, O Lord, as we surrender all our lives. Amen. How powerful are those words? So simple worship. But you know that carries such a heavy burden in our hearts to exalt Jesus, to exalt God. You know, this week, I, uh, I was working in my house. And when I was working, I, I usually like, you know, playing music just to kind of get me along the day. <clears throat> and this week, I was, uh, for some weird reason, my soul was craving worship. I was like, that's so weird, you know, like listening to worship the whole entire day. I never tried that before. But man, it's so beautiful when your spirit's connected to the most highest. It's so beautiful to sing. And it's so amazing that even though we're here at church, God can still create the same atmosphere in your lives, in your own room. And he can change your life just like that with worship. He can change your day just like that with worship. And I encourage all of you guys, let's sing that one more time. And let's sing it with an open heart. And I God, as we exalt you tonight, Father God, we lay down our lives, we lay down our hearts, Father God, to honor you, Father God, and not to dishonor you anymore. We pray, Father God, that each and every one of our lives, you create a fire, Father God, and a passion, Father God, and that same revival that we've been hearing across the U.S., Father God, to come into our lives to honor you, Father God. We pray, Father God, that if we are dishonoring you in the way that we walk, Father God, we pray that you change that and that you make us new, Father God. And you correct us, Father God, but not like the world corrects, Father God, because we follow a God of love, and you correct us with love, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for what you're doing in our lives. In your name I pray, amen and amen. Amen, amen. You guys are more than welcome to go to your seats. <laughs> I got some announcements for you guys today. Now, that was a powerful sermon. Now, can you guys tell your neighbor, or actually before you tell your neighbor, you know it's a great way to honor God? By connecting with the church. By connecting with the church and serving and connecting with the body of Christ. It's not just walking with the Lord, but it's also working with the church. Now, I got some awesome announcements for you guys, and they're pretty simple. We got two things for this month. So the first one is, how many of you guys like roller coasters? Raise your hands. There we go. There we go. Some people like heights. All right. Well, whoever likes roller coasters... We're going to be having a prayer meeting at Six Flags tomorrow. That's right. <laughs> no, guys, please get connected. Um, please get connected with me and, and Ruth. She's outside. Uh, we're going to have you guys sign some contracts uh, for us, and then we're going to meet here tomorrow at 8 in the morning. Can someone repeat that time to me real quick? What time? There we go. So if you guys show up at 9, we're already gone. We're going to be riding what? 
Tatsu, I don't know. We're going to be conquering Goliath. That's what we're going to be doing. Um, we also got one more event, one more event, and that is the Young Adults Camp. And this is ages 18 and over. The Youth Camp, we will announce it um, at, at a later date, but this is only for the Young Adults. So if you're 18 and over and you want to go, please get connected with Ivan. And you said the cutoff date is March 11th, right? Yeah, by March 11th, you have to have it paid, correct? By March 11th, guys, by March 11th, you have to get it paid. Now, I promise you, the camp that we're going to, man, they prepare it. It's, it's a blessing. You always come back. You always come back.